Ah, Fremenay. Genshin's newest four-star Cryo Claymore character, who I can relate to a lot. <sighs> okay, jokes aside, Fremenay's playstyle and kit is actually pretty interesting, so I decided to do a challenge where I spent 10 hours learning Fremenay and mastering his playstyle to see how he is meta-wise in Genshin. Over the course of 10 hours I've played Fremenay, I learned that his kit is surprisingly good. Besides the physical carry that he is written out to be, I also set out his reverse melt potential as well, and it did a crazy amount of damage, which I'll get into that more in detail in the video. But yeah, here's how I brought Fremenay from 0 to hero in 10 hours. Before we start, I have an important question to ask Child through my show. Okay, so I'm gonna ask why I give Fremenay in 10 pulls. I'm sorry. But as a bot, I don't have access to real-time information about your Genshin Impact account. However, the probability of getting a 5-star character in Genshin Impact is around 0. 0.6% per wish, so it's not guaranteed that you will get Fremenet in 10 wishes. Good luck with your pulls! But he's a 4-star! My show is an AI bot that can be used for AI companionship and someone you can talk to anytime. With my show, you can create your own AI friend by giving them a name, height, age, various personalities, outfits, and more. All within 2 minutes. For people that are 18 years and older, there are NSFW options you can turn on if you are feeling bored or lonely. With AI girlfriends and boyfriend options, as well as personal RPG games and roleplay. Look, there are so many options. IELTS teacher Ben, Levi, English coach Lily, and even Genshin characters such as Child. Here I'm chatting with an AI, and you can see her giving me a response. I have NSFW option turned on, which means you can talk without filter. Let's check out a voice call option. Hi, I am Emma Sefer Atwell. Let's have a chat. How was your day? My day is bad. Emma, oh no, darling. Whoa. I'm sorry to hear that. Did something unpleasant happen? Let's try to think of something positive and cheerful together to brighten up your day. Zonely wasn't making any sense, unfortunately. If you are interested in my show, make sure to sign up using my code for extra rewards that are included in the video description or pinned comment. And once again, thank you my show for sponsoring this video. So to actually start the video, I had to pull for Fremenay first. The last 4 star I got was Lion's Roar, so the next 4 star I get will definitely be the one of the 3 rated up Claymore characters. The first 4 singles I did were all random 3 stars, and on my 5th single pull, I got a guaranteed 4 star. And what do you know? I actually got pretty lucky though, because I got my Fremenay, who I'll be using without any extra constellations throughout this video. And also just a reminder, if you ended up enjoying this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe. It means a lot, and we will definitely make Fremenay's day as well. During the first hour, I used this time to read up Fremenay's skills and passive to see what he's all about. I also stole Yoros' artifact, which were 4-piece Pale Flame for physical damage. And it turned out that I had a pretty good crit stat at level 1. For weapon, I just slapped my Sacrificial Grace Sword on him because I'm still level 1 and I just wanted to test him out. I went to Fontaine and decided to challenge one of the Ballerina bosses, with my Fremenay still at level 1. This boss was pretty tanky, and being a new boss, it was decently challenging. But for a level 1 character, it might have been too early for me as I was only doing around 1k normal attacks. Also, since I've only just gotten Fremenay, I had no idea how his attacks worked, and I was just spamming his elemental skill button before getting deleted by the boss. Okay. I just got one shot it. Maybe I should have leveled him up. I'll come back to you later. Like my other Zero to Hero videos, I'm setting myself a few goals for Fremenay before this challenge is over. My first goal was to level up Fremenay to level 80. Since we only have a 10 hour time limit this time, I think level 80 will be enough. My second goal is of course to hit 100k damage in one hit. Now this might be more difficult compared to Lenny, but I'll try to get as close as 100k as possible. The third goal is to beat the Spiral Abyss with Fremenay evolving a party. With a 10 hour time limit, this might be more difficult since I'll have to get used to his skills, learn some rotation, find an ideal team comp for him, and then challenge the Abyss all in under 10 hours. The fourth goal is to defeat 10 bosses with Fremenay, so we'll have to fight one boss every hour for 10 hours. My final goal is simply just to learn something new about him that I didn't know before I started this challenge. And at the end of this 10 hour challenge, we'll come back and reflect on my goals and see if we accomplished any. Anyways, back to my first hour of maining Fermenay, I leveled up the Star Silver Claymore to level 90, and since Fermenay is a physical DPS, I just thought why not? I went around a nearby Fontaine area to just test out his normal attack damage, which we immediately saw an improvement compared to when we fought the boss earlier. At just level 19, he's able to dish out a pretty respectable amount of damage, although this seal is pretty thick. I also fought a Water Eidolon enemies and was able to level up passively to 20, so now I can finally ascend Fermenay to level 40. And soon after, I was able to level him up to 39, since I pre-farmed his boss materials. Right now, I still have no idea how to play Fremenay, and since he's a Claymore character, I just kept on spamming his elemental skill and doing cryo damage with it, and wondering what I'm missing with his character. I used these crabs as my damage testing target. 
That one's lucky. It's hiding under water. And since Fermine needed their drops, it all worked out. I level up Fermine's talent, and at this point, I noticed something. There are more to his elemental skills than what I have been utilizing. Anyways, I went to a domain to test out Fermine's potential as a reverse melt DPS. I used a pretty overpowered team, and at just level 69, Fermine was able to dish out a pretty good amount of damage. So we're already halfway to our 100k damage goal. Maybe our goal of hitting 100k damage is more realistic now. So I used the same melt team against the Denzel Chicken. The reverse melt team proved to be pretty good as well, and we defeated our first boss. Before the end of my first hour, I was able to ascend Femine to level 80 as well. So we were already done with our first goal. In the second hour, I went back to physical Femine, and with him leveled up, he was able to deal 10k normal attacks. I read up on his skill as well, and discovered he could do more with his elemental skill. I was able to press his elemental skill once, and accumulate stacks with his normal attacks, which have different functions depending on the number of stacks I have, up to 4 stacks. You can basically see the number of stacks he has based on the penguin that hovers over him as well. And at maximum stacks, he hits a penguin out. I tested my new knowledge against random enemies as well, and it immediately made a difference in my DPS output. I used a physical build and went to challenge Magu Kenki. As a physical DPS, he was doing pretty well against the boss, and we were able to finish off our second boss to wrap up the second hour. During hour 3, I hunted some Fatuises and Majors. I chose to use the Wolf's Greystone on Fermine because I wanted to test out a 5 star weapon. It does a bit more damage compared to the Star Silver Claymore, but it's pretty much expected since it's a 5 star. I pretty much just went around smacking enemies for the next 30 minutes and farmed up a good amount of materials. I swapped off my physical artifact with cryo damage ones and went to fight a pyro hypostasis. With this third boss, I decided to try out Fermination's normal attack damage with the help of Tong Yun's elemental skill infusion. Damage wise, it's actually a bit worse than physical. I'm not sure if Fermination's melt has some sort of internal cooldown, but I'll probably stick to physical damage if I wanted to do normal attacks with Fermination. With the third boss down, I went around Inazuma to farm Spectre enemies. I used a pretty similar team from the Pyro Hypostasis fight, and it kinda worked out since I was able to defeat even the harder enemies like Mirror Maiden. Although it might have been accidental since I drowned the enemy instead. During the fourth hour, I tried a bit of Burn Gen Fermine. With C6 Bennett, Fermine is able to infuse his normal attacks to Pyro, but the enemies in New Year were a bit squishy, so they died before I could test out Burn Gen. Even the normal enemies in Fontaine die with Shinchou's Vaporize as well. So we'll have to find harder enemies to test Burgeon out. Luckily, I found a Helicho camp, but even the enemies here refused to cooperate, and just completely avoided Bonanza's burst, so I couldn't stand on it to infuse my attacks with Pyro. With back-to-back -back failures trying to test out Burgeon, I took my anger out on the crabs. They were pretty squishy as well, so I didn't get a chance to use Burgeon either. Well, if there's one enemy in Fontaine that we could definitely test out Burgeon, it's definitely this thick Hydro Eidolon, right? Well, not exactly. Okay, that might have been karma for killing too many sea animals. Anyways, I spent most of hour 4 just farming for Fermine's talent materials, and continued the melt build because I like seeing big numbers. And Fermine was able to deal 83k damage now, so we're inching closer and closer to our 100k damage goal. Over the next hour, I was mainly just experimenting with different teams for Fermine. I also swiped for the battle pass, just so I could get Fermine's talent materials, because I kinda ran out of resins to farm. I went to fight the grandfather of all crabs, with Fermine's physical build. And I gotta say, as someone that wasn't the biggest fan of physical nor claymores, Something about knocking robot penguins against enemies is oddly satisfying. So we were able to defeat a king crab, and after that, I was also able to level up a black cliff claymore, so I can test out Fermine with it. I went back to Inazuma to hunt for some Nabushis, and with our newly leveled up claymore, it was definitely holding up with other weapons I tested as well. Even against Ruin Graders, who have a lot of physical resistance, it was doing a pretty good amount of damage as well. I just finished my 5th hour killing most of the Ruin enemies in Inazuma with my physical build. I started the 6th hour doing the newest Genshin event, and chose a desperate difficulty. I went back to the Star Silver weapon, and just tested out my physical damage against the enemies. This difficulty was just right, and my team was able to support Fermine pretty well, with Shinchou allowing me to shatter, Rosaria applying cryo, and buffing Fermine, while Fermine just slashing through the enemies, and I was able to complete the challenge with a lot of time to spare. Next, I quickly swapped to the melt build, and went into the second challenge. The enemies here were a bit tougher at level 95, and Melt did a good amount of damage as well. Using Melt for Fermine is actually pretty fun, and it's definitely something to test out just to try out different builds and team comps for him, especially if you have Bennett at C6. I was able to complete this challenge just in the nick of time, so it felt really good. Anyways, I continued the event with the same team comp, and this time we had to fight a lot of ruined enemies. Luckily, Melt was pretty effective against them, and we were able to deal a record high 89k damage as well. So this challenge was pretty easy. 
Afterwards, I went to the Sumeru Desert to hunt for some Doritos. I went back with my physical build so I can just relax and not worry about rotations that much. And we got a lot of farming done in general. With almost 6 hours of playing Fremine, I can definitely say that even without any constellations, he can definitely hold his own. Next, I went to complete Floor 9 of the Abyss. Since we're still in the earlier floors, everything was pretty easy, and we got through the first chamber relatively quickly. In the second chamber, Fermanet was also pretty good since there were some pyro slimes. Being paired up with my physical team, we were able to complete this chamber pretty easily. The final chamber had a bunch of mecha enemies, and we just froze them so they weren't able to move that much. It got a bit scary for Fermanet in the end, but ultimately we were able to clear Floor 9. During hour 7, I went to do the Fontaine Reputation quests. I was mostly using my physical build with the Black Cliff weapon, and the purple balls were easily disposed of. Next were the mecha enemies, and we were able to just freeze them and chip their HP down. The last mecha enemies were also pretty easy. I basically combined a few reaction damage and physical attacks to finish them off and complete my bounties. After that, I traveled around Tavat and just fought all kinds of enemies, and got to visit places that I haven't been to in a long time, which might have been why this happened to Fermine since I wasn't used to the chasm. To cap off Hour 7, I went to fight the Thundering Manifestation boss. Since this boss is already Electro, I decided to bring Mika along with this fight. Even though Mika wasn't C6, his buffs definitely helped Fermine out, and the extra heals were really nice as well. I started off Hour 8 with another attempt at the Burnjin team. This time I chose to fight the 4 Ruin Guards since they're pretty tanky, so hopefully we'll be able to test out the Burnjin damage. Uh, never mind. Well, at least I was able to test out Vaporize Fermine, and I don't know how I feel about it. I went to another location with some Ruin Guards, and this time I was able to properly test it out. I did have C2 Nahida, so the damage might have been a little higher, but I was doing around 23k Burnjin damage without a crit. After that, I went back to complete the event, since a new one unlocked, and we had to fight a lot of Slimes and Hydro Eidolons. I continued with Burnjin since the enemies were already Hydro. And since I was on an Elemental Mastery build, it also benefited Shadow damage as well, after shattering the Frozen enemies. Afterwards, I went to the Abyss and attempted Floor 10. I went with the Burnjin team on this floor, and it went well. Although Burnjin is a bit difficult to keep up with the rotations, it was still a very fun concept to try out. Floor 10 was actually a lot easier than Floor 9, so we got through it without any problems. I chose to fight a wolf to finish off my 8th hour, and I tried out Burnjin against him as well, since he's immune to Cryo, and it worked out pretty well. In the second phase, he was just chilling, so we were able to finish him off. With 8 hours under our belt, I thought it was time to show why I learned with Fermine. I decided to queue into a co-op match and joined into a Signora lobby. I got a pretty good team that's supporting me. Well, I guess I'm the only DPS in this game. Hopefully I'll be able to just physical the boss to death. The first phase went by pretty quickly. Everyone just unleashed their skills and bursts and we were able to take down Signora pretty fast. Although this banana in our team was kinda trolling. Why are you destroying us? Cool. The second phase was a bit harder for us, but luckily we had Kokomi keeping us alive the whole time. Fermine was also pretty tanky as well, so he was able to withstand a good amount of attacks from Signora. And in the end, we defeated Signora without any casualties in our team. I continued solo and went to hunt for some consecrated beasts with physical Fermine. They were all decently challenging because they were thick, but the enemies were still no match against me. I had the most problems against a dragon beast, but we quickly solved the problem. To finish off Hour 9, I just went to fight the twin bishop bosses in Enconomia. Physical was actually decent against both of them, and since Fermine is Claymore, he was able to break the wall to stun one of the bosses. I initially thought this boss would be a challenge, but it turned out I was wrong, and we made easy work of them. So we just have one more hour left to kill two more bosses to complete one of our goals, and hopefully we'll be able to finish the Abyss. I started my final hour killing some Abyss Majors for some materials for my Sacrificial Grace Sword. Since Reverse Melt Fermine runs into the problem of not having enough energy, I wanted to try out a Sacrificial Weapon to see how it holds up. I was able to get a weapon to level 90, and went to fight the Scaramouche Weekly boss. I got through the first phase pretty quickly since it's level 60, and after stunning the boss, I could try out how much damage I could do with physical Fermine. So I was able to do around 60k against Scara, so I consider that a win. But since we still had to try to get 100k damage, I also went to floor 7 of the Abyss, and used the Reverse Melt team comp to hopefully complete a goal, and it did exactly what I hoped for. For those of you wondering, yes, Floor 7 increases crit damage dealt by 120% for everyone in the party. So we basically cheated to reach 100k damage. Also, there's one more boss we had to kill, which was the boss that started my 10 hour long training arc. So hopefully I'll be able to get my revenge by defeating it. And also complete my goal of defeating 10 different bosses in 10 hours.
Okay, feminist still died. But I used to kill the boss, right? With her last 10 minutes to go, I went back to the abyss for floor 12 with Melt Feminine. We actually got through the Magu Kenki boss just fine. But I also struggled against the Grandpa Crab a lot. I didn't have any Hydro with me, so the shield took forever to break. And it was just a pretty rough fight overall. But I guess this was the Crab's revenge from earlier when I killed it. In the end, the Crab was able to get its revenge on me. This hurts a lot, because I probably didn't have time to complete floor 12 of the Spiral Abyss on time, since we only had 4 minutes left. Anyways, I went to fight the Dendro KFC again, because if I can't beat the crab, I'll just bully the chicken. I also tried out the Reverse Melt team against the Ballerina bosses in Fontaine again. Although this boss does have a lot of cryo resistance, Feminine was also able to get his own revenge arc, and with a Melt team this time, he was able to defeat the Ballerina bosses without dying, and we were able to complete this 10 hour challenge. So I spent 10 hours learning Fermine to see if physical is meta. My experience with Fermine was definitely fun and also exhausting. Even though I wasn't a big fan of both physical and claymores, I gotta admit, he definitely changed my mind, so I guess big white numbers can be satisfying as well. Now let's go over our initial goals for this challenge and see what we accomplished. The first goal was pretty easy. We got Fermine to level 80 within the first hour, so we can check this goal off. The second goal was to deal 100k damage with one single hit, which we kinda cheated with to complete. But we still got that one done. The third goal was completing the abyss, which I ran out of time to do. I think for the next time I do another 10 hour challenge, I'll try not to lose track of time so I can actually complete the abyss on time. My fourth goal was to defeat 10 different bosses, which I managed to complete and ultimately got my revenge against the Fontaine boss. So I'm satisfied with that. Finally, my last goal was to learn something new about Fermine before I started a 10 hour challenge. In the beginning of the challenge, I was mostly spamming my elemental skills without knowing about the shattering pressure levels. But after learning about it, it definitely made a difference in my damage output for Fermine. So I guess next time I should read about the talent skills first before playing the character. Anyways, I hope you learned something or enjoyed this video. I'll probably do these 10 hour 0 to kill challenges for other 4 star characters as well. So be sure to comment which characters you would like to see next. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out my Lenny 20 days 0 to hero challenge by clicking on the video here.